Okay, guys, let's get started. Um, my name is Charlie Corner. I'm the owner of First Down Playbook. I'm also a 30-year coach, nine in the NFL wrestling college. And a lot of my background was in special teams. Uh, and tonight we're going to cover kickoff, uh, kickoff coverage. Uh, we've done uh, <coughs> kickoff return and shield punt before this. So this is the third of a six-week deal, as you saw on the slides as the, uh, you know, the, the preemption to this thing right here. Kendall Acho who is also a co-owner of First Down Playbook. Uh, she'll be with me tonight, and uh, she does a great job of, uh, you know, taking your questions. So I'm asking that put your questions over in chat, if you will. I know there's a and a thing that you guys might be using with your players or with your students. It's just more uh, easy, you know, it's easier for us, I should say, to use the uh, chat functionality. And once again, we're going to take questions at the, at the end. You know, we'll have uh, 100 coaches on here tonight. So... Uh, we can't afford to slow down, you know, just for one question, but I will stay here as long as it takes to get everybody's questions answered. All right. Now, uh, you're looking at kind of the outline right there, uh, what we're going to cover tonight. Uh, guys, my experience with kickoff coverage is, you know, we all like to think that the position that we coach, uh, you know, there, there's a degree of toughness that has to go along with it and kind of an attitude. Uh, and, and that's every room in the building. I mean, heck, you go in a receiver room and they're going to talk about toughness. Wherever you go, there's going to be talk about that. This is, this is the real deal. I mean, it takes a special kind of cat to be on the kickoff cover team, and you need to recognize that as a coach. Uh, this is the team that, you know, most other mamas don't want them to be on. And, and we've done a lot to, to improve our game and make it safer and all that. And, and, and we, you know, hats off to all that. But this is still an open field, violent play. All right. And so – uh, keep that in mind as you're going through choosing your personnel. I'm not going to talk a lot about personnel. Uh, I'm going to show you the positions here in a second and show you where I would put the people if I were you. But uh, I'm just saying that there's, you know, a 4-4 four -four turns into a 5-2 sometimes if the wrong kind of guy is running down on this. So very important to, to find the right kind of attitude. Now, while we're on, uh, you know, while we're on just this play as a, as a whole, if you're – the defensive coordinator, in, in my opinion, you need to take a big time interest in this play. I mean, you know, you're, you're going to sit there over the course of a year and you keep starting your uh, defensive, uh, you know, playing defense on around the 40, 50 or your own 40 every time, then that, that's your fault. This is a defensive play and it's the first defensive play that happens. So, and, you know, if you're sitting back and, and you're not willing to get your hands dirty, to, uh, you know, get involved in this, and shame on you, and, and you're going to pay the price. So, to me, a lot of what you do when you teach kickoff coverage and a lot of what you, uh, you know, the people that ought to be involved in it ought to be the same guys that are teaching the defensive line, teaching the linebackers, the secondary, because you ought to teach it with what you should, in my opinion, teach it with defensive principles, and your defensive guys should instill a, a big-time appreciation for it among the defensive players. Now, the, the most important person on the kickoff team, in my opinion, is the kicker. And uh, I, have, I have pulled my hair out many a years over this. Uh, but to me, the reason it's important is because, you know, you, you watch a kicker, uh, with a PAT or a field goal, and you say you missed a kick. Well, there are probably, you know, there are a lot more kicks that are missed as a kickoff guy than there are as a PAT field goal. And when I mean missed, I'm a firm believer that you don't put the ball in the middle of the field ever. I just don't believe in it. There are people that, are, that do it that are much better coaches than me. They're, they'll be coaching this, sun, uh, this coming fall on a Sunday. Uh, I, I've just watched it. Um, and to me, it, it makes no sense not to use the field as your friend. And what I mean by that is try to get that ball, you know, somewhere outside that, you know, the, the, the hashes, try to get it over to the sideline just cuts down the, the amount of field that you have to cover. And if you watch college football now, you see almost everybody doing it. So your kicker is very important. He needs to understand, unless he's got the ability to kick it through the end zone every time, and not many of them do, that's an important part of it. It's a very important part that uh, they are able to place the ball. All right, let's take a look at some of our slides here. Let me get this Zoom thing out of the way. You guys that haven't been here, you're going to know that the, the, the biggest problems that if we have any are going to be my uh, technical problems. So here's uh, – now, I, I want to also point out, I just redid some of these – all of these slides today. So uh, they're going to be uh, refined a little bit in the morning. Unless you get up really, really early, they'll be uh, all good to go by the time you get up and get on here. So 
the way we taught it, and I've got this set up uh, with a high school setup where we're kicking from the 40. And so you can see we've got the staggered deal right here where with this five yards restraining line, the way we coached it was this. We had the, and I'm going to go up here where you can see the fives had their back foot on the 35, the fours split the crotch of the five, the three split the crotch of the fours, two split the crotch of the three, and the ones split the crotch of the twos. So the reason we did it that way was we only had, we had a kicker, all right, who would give an indicator of when he was going to go. The fives would read off of the kicker. The fours are not looking at the kicker. The fours are looking at the fives. When the five moves, the four moves, okay? Because with the five already having a step of momentum or, or started earlier, he should be past the, the four. The three watches the four. The two watches the three. The one watches the two. Same on the other side. This gives you a chance to hold them accountable and to make sure that your get off, all right, is as good as it can be. Now, I get it, you know, you can have somebody that can watch it, time it up. But if you get out here, your three, twos, and ones, it's hard to see, guys, hard to see inside. And what you're going to end up doing is having somebody late, and then you're going to have a vertical seam down the field. So you can see where we talk about that right here. And we just talk about the uh, indicators with the fours and the fives and, and who exactly will be looking at who. And you've got to work on this, guys. This is something that, uh, you know, you get away from, you work one or two times early, and then you never get back to it. You've got to, you know, look at it on tape. I'm going to show you here what we used to do. And you got to make sure that you're still doing it right, game four, five, and six. Right now, I'm going to shrink the screen up here a little bit. I'll be back and forth to this because we – all first down playbook plays are on a, a long field when it comes to kickoff uh, – excuse me, uh, kickoff and long field plays. So, essentially, this is just our kickoff cover field zones. I know everybody has that. From the 35 to the 40, okay, high school rules here, if your college is adjusted, all right, this is the restraining zone. What we talked about was from the 40, when the ball is kicked, all right, speed and read zone, all right, and this is also going to be where you're going to avoid unless you're within 15 yards of the kicker. So an important thing that I'll show you on tape, we always used to, like, freeze the tape, all right, at the, at the point where the ball is kicked. A, make sure nobody's offsides, cardinal sin for offsides. But B, we want to make sure that everybody was hitting that restraining line right there at the same time. And I mean, when you grade the tape, guys, do it. Every time you kick the ball off, go in and take a look and see that all your guys are getting at the line on time. If they're not, coach it up because you lose half the battle right here if you're not getting people off on the kick. Now, the 40 to the 35. That speed part gets to what I was saying early. I mean, you got some, you know, you got some four or five cats that turn into five, three when they're thinking about what they're going to find down here on the other end. So this is very important. Dave Tobe, who I worked for at the Chicago Bears, taught me so much about special teams. He's with the Kansas City Chiefs now, highest paid special teams coach in the league. Um, he, he used to always, he was a big believer in first in. You know, people made a tackle, and he'd be like, that's, that's great, made a tackle. And we, you do have to make tackles. He's, but most of the plays are destroyed by the first end guy. The guys that get down the field eat up blocks. The guys that get down the field and blow up things. And so we used to stop the video at when the first – and you can change it, you know, depending on your kicker's ability and the level of football you – coach stop that video when the first guy gets to like the 35 yard line or maybe the 40 yard line or 30 whatever and then whoever the first guy is freeze it and make sure that the last guy is not five yards behind him unless he got double teamed or something there's no reason for it so you want to like stop that tape and you want to point it out if the first guy is at the 30 yard line and you got a cat back here seven yards deep you better point it out because there are, vert there are horizontal seams in your coverage. There are vertical seams, too, because if you've got two guys up here and one guy back here, you're going to have a seam that's going to come back to bite you. All right, now, as you get within 15 yards of the ball, all right, we no longer taught an avoid. And I'll, I'll show you a whip and a rip how we taught avoids here in a second. But when you get within 10, 15 yards of the ball, it was a two-gap zone. And I'll show you more about what we uh, taught there. And then once you get down here, obviously, you got to be able to make a play. And uh, sometimes it, you might be the first in and make it. 
more often than not, you're going to be the guy that comes in and cleans up. Now, I'm going to show you just real quick, because we're not going to spend a lot of time on this. If you want schemes, get, get first down playbook. There's, there's, I don't know, like 40 schemes in there, whatever. And all the coaching points in the whole bit. But this is just the general. Let me shrink this up a little bit. All right. Same thing as I've been talking about really the last couple of weeks. You, you want to teach, all right, with proven principles. And you also want to try to tie it into defense as much as you can. And so really, you know, I've seen it taught to where your front line, your linebackers, you know, as far as guys were folding and all that, the way we taught it was that we wanted to teach shoulder, all right, with the opposite fives, shoulder with the four, shoulder with the three, meaning keep the ball on your inside shoulder, squeeze it. Same principles as what we talked about in punt last week. It's not going to look like this, guys. Somebody's going to get doubled. The first guy down, He's going to be the first, the most inside. The second guy down is going to be the next guy, on and on and on. And then what we did is we contained with the two and we folded and stacked with the one. Now, I want to point out, you see where that one is folding and stacking, I hope. That's, at the, that's between the 20 and 25-yard line. That's not back over here in the 40, all right? That'll get your butt beat in a hurry as quick as anything. You better get your ones up in there because it's like the genie out of the bottle, okay? You might have a guy for that returner, but once he spits out all this up here, this cat probably got no chance. So you better have that one up in there folding and fitting somewhere to make a play. Same thing back over here. Now, we're kicking deep right here, right? So we've got the five, all right, excuse me. Yeah, we've got the five and the four to the ball, all right? And then we've got a shoulder player with the three, contained with the two, all right? And we call it a stack technique. I'm going to show you this as they take on wedges, and I know wedges are, you know, the, the most you can kind of have is a two-man, but they still, I've, I've been watching tape, they still show up. So you better be able to fit off of a two-man block or a two-man wedge or whatever shows. And then the kicker has got to get involved, and he doesn't stand back here at the 40 either because if the kicker will get up here in the hole, even if the guy can't make a play and he'll make the ball carrier cut left or right and your pursuit is – uh, you know, the way it should be, somebody can make a play. If he makes, if he's back here, all right, yeah, and I get it, he's going to make him change direction and all the things that you teach a kicker to do. But war is, you're, you're lost, guys. Get him up in here. Get him up in here to where this, the color of the jersey and the fact he's got a helmet on makes the returner cut and maybe cut back into somebody. But this is just a typical deep right kick the way we taught it. Now, two things that you're going to see on tape when I get to it. You're going to see uh, what we call a, a chip and wrap. Now, we all, you know, we, everybody has twists and things that they do to protect their good care, uh, cover guy. What we did, this was at Tennessee. We didn't do this at the Chicago Bears. But at Tennessee, what we did is we would take, and typically it would be the guy that was going to be double teamed. If we knew that our five was a good player, and he was, and we knew that, they were going to, there was going to be a double team on him. We would teach the four because guess who's going to be double teaming the five most of the time? It's going to be the guy over top of the four. As we came down and the four saw that his guy was going to double five, he would chip him. He would run right through him, all right, knock him off with a double. Now, once again, just like we always talk about twists, he didn't give himself up, get caught down inside. He put his helmet, put his shoulder pads on that guy and ricochet back up to the coverage. Now the five who they were trying to double, all right, full speed going to draw that double team, but then at the last second, put his left foot in the ground, wrap around that chip player, and now you're going to free two guys up to the ball. We would just call it uh, 45 wrap or 34 wrap or whoever, uh, just because we knew that they were going to try to double our best players. I'll show you that on tape. I know it sounds like a bunch of chalkboard, whiteboard stuff, but I got tape on it, so I, I, can, I can talk about it. All right, now, this is something that I, I don't even really have identified on tape because it's pretty much a, a given. We just called it a rover three. Now, you could rover you know, whoever you want to as long as you've got your assignments right on the backside. When we were deep kicking right, we would call deep right rover three. And all that meant was the three was going to come down and he was going to be an extra guy to the ball. And just a, you know, just a way to get more hats to the ball. You took away a shoulder player out here, so you got to be careful. What you're doing is you're saying, 
I really need you five. I really need you four. I need you to make sure that you're gonna make a play, not let that ball get out here. And and you know, at all costs, our contain and our fold and stack have got to be good right here. But we're gonna cheat a little bit and get somebody extra to the ball. All right, now let's talk about some techniques. These are the techniques I'm talking about that I'm gonna go in and clean up a little bit tomorrow. All right, but this is just a, a, a lane replace technique. It's almost the same thing. We, it is the same thing. Same thing we talked about last week with shield punt. All right, you're gonna have, you know, your aiming point to the ball and all that, but as you're going down the field, okay, and the three gets down the field first, maybe because the two got doubled, uh, and, and these are wrong, this should be a, a, a two and a three, they're backwards, but I think you get the point. If this red guy is down the field first, and the two's not, he just needs to fill outside, okay? He needs to be the next guy outside. You want to fill your lanes up inside out by who gets down there first, one and then two. Just call it lane replace technique. All right now, when we were in that uh, speed and read area, okay, the way we taught it, if you are more than 15 yards from the ball, don't two-gap the guy blocking you because you're going to get caught up on a block and it's, it's just too soon. If you can't get back into your lane after you rip or whip, and I'm going to show you what that is here in a second, after you avoid, then that's the point where you want to two gap. There's, if, if you can't get back into your lane and you're 20 yards from the ball after you rip or whip them, you got the wrong guy. Get another person on your team because you've got to be able, you can't get caught up on two block, uh, 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 two gap blocks all the way up the field. So we determined it like this. We called it rip. In other words, I'm coming down the field. My guy's going to block me. I am going to rip across his face. Rip across his face, get back in my lane, and get to the ball. Now, this, is, this can be you know, executed a couple different ways, depending on who you are. I mean, if you're a smaller guy and you can put that left foot in the ground and be going 100 miles an hour north, and then put that left foot in the ground and go east and then get back north, do it that way. If you're a bigger guy, all right, you can rip, take your right hand, club him upside the shoulder pads or whatever and get across. But the point is you're not engaging in a two gap. You're 100 miles an hour, you're getting across the face, getting back inside to the ball. Now, a whip technique is that you're just going to come down, the same block is happening, but either the ball is more outside or you've got a better idea about what he's going to do and you just whip him. Whip means you just whip him to the point, right? I am going to take speed and I am, at times, might not do a thing. Might just kind of give him a little wiggle with my head like I'm going to rip him and just blow right by him. The other thing that you can do is, and, and once again, you, talk, you heard me talk about uh, clubbing and getting around. Take your right arm right here, chop, get the hands off. You've got to play football with your hands, guys, on the special teams. And you watch good, I'm gonna show you some tape right now uh, at the end of this thing. And the best players are the ones that use their hands and they can use them while they're playing 100 miles an hour and, and while they're looking at what's going on and being able to diagnose what the return is. All right, so, You are within 15 yards of the ball. Let me blow this up here a little bit. All right, so once I get within 15 yards of the ball, all right, I am going to two gap and then shed right or shed left. Now, okay, I, I've been guilty of this. So I know at least some of y'all have been. You know, you go in and, and you're teaching and you get up in front of the room, maybe the special teams or even on the field and, you know, you go grab the, uh, you know, your girl manager and you go down and you two gap her and, uh, you, you know, you rip it, it looks so pretty and everything. I, I'm, I'm telling you right now, two gap just means that you're going to engage the blocker. And what I'm trying to say is you, you, you can't teach this like it's going to be some dominant block, or excuse me, uh, get off block where the guy's going to come down, he's going to get his hands on him, he's going to butt him in the face, rip across his face. That's what you're going to teach. But I'm telling you right now, it ain't going to happen that way. Most of the time, all two gap means is that you're going to come down with the option to go left or right with some contact on that blocker, all right? And you're going to, once again, 
you're not going to go outside and go around him because if you, by the time you avoid him, if you avoid him, by the time you get back in your lane, the ball is gone. So two gap can mean everything from a very physical thing. But if you go down and you two gap and you get wrapped up on the blocker, you know, better off than if you'd avoided him. So two gap means contact on the blocker, all right, rip to one side or the other and get back in the lane and obviously get to the ball. And now this was a big deal for, for us at Tennessee and Derek Dooley taught me this and, and Derek Dooley's a good uh, special teams guy. Uh, I learned a lot from him as well. And on the uh, a right return right here with the players away, okay, we always talked about the three, two, and the one, assuming that we weren't rovering the three like I showed you. We taught the three with the ball away, you got to go. The three is extremely important because he had to eat up blocks to make sure that your contain guy doesn't get people on him. If you get cats out here, particularly with outside leverage on your two, all right, you got an issue because you don't know if it's a counter coming back or not. So we talked the three, very aggressive. Two is contained, okay? What is contained? We talked about it last week. Contained is inside and in front. If I am deeper than the ball, I don't have contained. If the ball is outside of me, I don't have contained. Same rules go for your two right here. The one is just like I said before. Notice we've got him folding up in there. He's a football player. He's not back over here eating popcorn, watching what's going on, waiting to make a game-saving tackle that he ain't going to make anyway if it gets to him. Get him up in there. Get him fit. And I'm, uh, I'm not sure if I saved that clip or not. I've had, I had some clips today where I was looking at were really good and some really bad. This guy right here better be able to make a tackle. He better be able to make an open field tackle even if he's up in here because if everybody does what they're supposed to and they do what they're supposed to, there's a good chance that he and the returner are going to be unblocked right in the hole. All right, once again, two-man wedge. Uh, I, I don't know what, what level, you know, your high school, your college, whatever. I, I know that theoretically two-man wedges, wedges, period, aren't supposed to be out there. But I'm telling you right now, I, I still see them. What happens is they separate the last second. So the principles that we're going to talk about here are still valid, meaning that if you've got two blockers coming from the back, from the back end, all right, the way we taught it was the two was going to take on the crease, and meaning that you want to separate those two, which should be a lot easier now if they're not allowing them to get hip to hip and all that. So if you're coming down, he wants to take that on. Now, if he does that, this one is going to come down and stack. Now, this is with the ball at them. He's going to stack. If the two hits the crease, one has to be outside if the ball bounces. He, you know, he kind of becomes contained right now. If two tries to hit the crease and for whatever reason ends up outside, now your one is going to have to be inside. So the one has got to be a very cognate player, kind of a linebacker type, the way that you play off of a defense alignment. That's what ought to happen right here. And I'm going to show you many, I'm going to show you several clips of this in the video as we get to the end. But it's just taking on a two-man wedge. Even if it's not a wedge, these principles will hold up. Let me check my time here, make sure I'm not getting all crazy on you. Okay, ship and wrap. This is, uh, this is what I was talking to you about with the, uh, with the big picture when I was showing the, the, the 43 wrap. All right, so same thing. Important ways to coach it, though, guys. The first thing is that if your three comes down the field, let's say that you're going to get a double on him, and he's coming down the field, <clears throat> and he, he wraps before he even gets close to him, it's not going to work. He's got to run, <clears throat> and, a, and he's got to draw the double team first, even if it's a single block. Maybe it's the deal where they've got an exceptional blocker, and they've got him mashed up on your guy. And you just want to get a little twist because you know that run is coming this way. All right, then what you've got to do is you've got to teach him to draw that block. He's got to get up in there, put his left foot in the ground, and then wrap. And the same thing here. I mean, this guy's got to get on his horse because if he's slow, the three's going to be slow. And if two guys are slow because they're trying to execute a chip and a wrap, or if they're just overthinking it, you might as well not run it. You might as well come on down there and stay in your lanes. But I'm here to tell you right now, this is a very effective way of teaching a twist, all right, or a looper and, and making sure that you don't lose anybody. Now, I skipped over something early that uh, I don't want to, I don't want to forget to get back to in my notes right here. 
there's always going to be an indicator, guys, on the kickoff return. Always. I mean, if you – and that's your job as a coach. Your job as a coach is to watch enough video, watch your team uh, – your opponent, excuse me, and there should be somebody on that return team, one dude that you can tell the three to look for, one guy that you can tell the two to look for. And what's going to happen is – that's going to tell you what return it is. Now, if you're playing somebody and they run middle return every time, good for you. Scheme the heck out of it and go knock them sideways. But if you play somebody who's got two or three different schemes, somebody in the back end, your off returner, the end over here, maybe it's the center. The center opens this way. The center opens that way. You need to find those keys and give those keys to uh, your players. Last week when we were – or the first week when we were doing this – we were uh, you know, kickoff return, and we were showing us against Alabama. And the Alabama guys were running down the field 100 miles an hour, had their hands up in the air, like signaling, signaling each other. Well, that's what they were doing. They had seen our keys, and, and, and any good team is going to see your keys, particularly in the NFL. In the NFL, what they do is they really try to hide their keys. I don't think you need to get to that level here. But as a kickoff cover guy, I'm telling you right now, uh, and a coach, if you study enough, you'll be able to give them a key It'll tell them what return it is before they ever cross really 20 yards. All right, um, so here we are. You can see our alignment right there. All right, let's do, let's do some of what I was talking about first, all right? Let's, um, let me get the Zoom thing out of the way again. Right, let's freeze the ball, all right? Let's freeze it, the video when the ball's kicked and see what we got here. And this is uh, game four, I believe it was that year. All right, guys, I ain't got a, I got an old. All right, so you can see, looking pretty good over here. You know, if you don't, if you're not looking like you're offside because the ball's gone, you're probably not there. Over here, all right, we got, got a little bit more to be desired, and you need to, and you need to point it out. I mean, from a standpoint, everybody ought to be hitting that line the same right there. Now, let's go, let's just take, because uh, I can't even remember. At the, you know, at the Bears, what we did, I think we did the 35-yard line over here. But let's just – let's go here. Let's look at the 40-yard line and freeze it when the first guy gets there. Okay. The first guy's right here, and he's going to be every time, the R5. He's a little bit past. But what you want to look for, guys, is this. You want to look for everybody being within five yards of one another. If you've got anybody five yards deeper – all right, which would be what? I guess that would be back here. All right, then you got an issue. Don't let it, don't tolerate it. Find a way, like let's say this cat right here was back here. You know, make him answer in your meeting. What, what, what is it that would make you be five yards, be seven, eight yards deeper than my man right here who's going to be first in every time? I'm telling you right now, if you let it slide, it'll bite you square in the ass. So don't, don't let it, don't tolerate it. All right, we'll be able to see most of what we want to see here uh, on the end zone copy. But look at the four, the R4. It's a whip technique. All right, see, he just went right by him, right? Up here. And then he hits really was a three-man wedge, which is, was definitely illegal back then. Let's take a look back over here. All right, three, got to protect the two. There's your containment. Now, look, guys, I want you to look at this now. Who makes the play? Who makes the play on our right hash, their left hash? Our two, the contain player makes the play. Guys, contain doesn't mean get over here and play it safe. Contain means contain the play and keep squeezing it, keep squeezing it. I, I watched Ohio State, and I think they still do it with Ryan Day. Uh, when Urban Myers was there, I went uh, one year and watched them play Purdue. And I'm telling you right now, every kickoff, everything was played over here inside the hash. Every, it was 22 players. Their kicker did such a good job, and they did such a good job of, of coaching it. And, and this is the way it should look right here. Ball placement is good by the kicker. Get it squeezed. Let's take a look from the end zone.
All right, let's watch the four right here. This is a, this is a whip technique. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Just run by him. Don't have to engage anything right there. And and a lot of times, you know, when you, there's a whip technique going on, people go, well, that's that, he didn't do anything. He just kept running. That's what a whip technique is. Understand the block. You know, this guy's supposed to be blocking him. If that guy comes and is over aggressive, is out here somewhere, maybe he needs to rip him. Here's another, here's another whip technique by the five. He can take that guy on, he could rip across, or he could whip him front side. All right, I think he makes a great decision right here and whips him front side. All right, let's go back over here. Take a look. Protecting the two. Protecting the two. Come on, two. Come on, two. Squeeze it, squeeze it, squeeze it. Get involved in the play. Now, look at where the one is. Not back here, all right? Even our kicker is up there pretty daggone close. Guys, get up here. Don't let the genie out of the bottle. Now, what's going on back over here? Ball away, just like we talked about last week. Begin the fold. Fold and contain, all right? In case that ball does spit out. I think I've got two kicks on here for Florida. And I do. Okay. Let's watch how we uh, play off of this wedge down here. All right, notice that the, the two, now guys, this is how important the two is. The two is in the NFL right now, all right? That's how important we thought when we're kicking to, to this area over here. Now the other two, all right, is, is, you know, we might have a different two away from where we're gonna kick, the two where we're gonna kick, but we knew the two was gonna have to take on a wedge if he got it. So right now, Boom, he takes on the wedge. I mean, this cat right here is backing up into it. He's, I'm sure Florida didn't want him to be back there. He takes on that wedge. So this guy, the one's got to play off of that. If he's going to be inside, he's got to be outside. There he is. I'm going to bring your feet a little bit there. Don't tuck your head. Go make a play. All right, let's look at the end zone. I think we've got a... Uh, Couple good, uh, maybe uh, good avoids here. Let's, let's look at the R5. He normally does something good. All right, guys, that, that's it right there. Now, that's a two gap. Now that's a pretty physical two gap. He's playing with his hands, getting rid of the blocker. But at the end of the day, Two gap doesn't mean go down there and, and run into somebody and get blocked, okay? So get rid of the blocker, now get to the ball. You might have to two gap again, all right? This time, this time the two gap turned out to be a shoulder. But keep coming to the ball. Guys, I mean, it is absolute utter chaos on this play. You start getting them to think about, you know, I gotta do this, I gotta be this pretty and, and all that. Let's take a look at this rip technique right here. Boom, there it is. There's your rip. Right now, he's got a decision to make. Do I whip him front side? Don't think so, because based on what I can see, I got a wedge up inside, I better get my butt in here. So I dip and rip my left arm across his face, get back vertical, and go attack the wedge. Really good job by 40 right there. And then once again, let's take a look over here. Take on the wedge. Inside the wedge, if he's gonna be inside the wedge, our one better be outside. And once again, 22 players playing on this side of the hash. If you're playing over here, you're not playing. All right, let me open up another one of these here. All right, let's go.
Mississippi State chip and wrap. All right, here's your chip and wrap that we were talking about. It's going to happen right here with the fives. Let me get to the end zone. Okay, I'm gonna freeze it. Once again, we know this is coming. All right? They're gonna double this R5 right here with these two guys right here, and we know it. So we're gonna chip with our L5, it's a 55 chip and wrap. So he's gonna chip and he's gonna wrap. And he's gonna come out of it, he's not gonna go inside and get blocked. All right, there he is, guys. And all he does is, you know, knock them both off of it. He's not going to give himself up. Now, both of them get to the ball. All right, let's see what else we got here. Let's look over here. I mean, this is a two gap by our two. That's a physical two gap. I, I don't know that they get much more physical than that unless it's in the NFL. But notice what he, I mean, he's playing with his hands. He understands two gap is one thing. Getting caught up on a block is another. I don't want to get caught up on a block. Okay. Let me go grab another one here. All right. I think this one is, uh, we got Kentucky. Yeah, all right, so this one right here, guys, we we'll to look at the L4. That guy's is a two gap. Watch what he does. He, he, doesn't, he doesn't get physical with anybody, the L4. Now, I'll say this, our fives are first in every time. They eat up a lot of stuff. But if they do that, in the four, you got to make a play. But watch the four right here. Use his hands. Hands, get rid of him. Let's take a look at it from the end zone. Here he is. See, what I'm, what I'm trying to say to you guys is that that's not an avoid. That's, that's, that's the way a two-gap can look sometimes. Just use your hands, work around it, and go make a play. But don't run out of your lane to avoid. Now, this, this dude out here, our, our contain better be careful. Right. I think this is, I want to show you the wedge at the top right here, same thing. Fit inside the wedge, got to be outside the wedge. Let's take a look from the end zone. Two takes the wedge on. Inside, inside, boom, be physical. Now that's the other thing. It's cause you're going inside the wedge doesn't mean you're blocked either. Watch, him, watch how he gets thin and he gets back north south. And once again, that's an NFL player. 24 does a good job right here. Just keep coming, keep bringing your feet, bring your feet.
All right, now that's, this, is, this is about as good as a two-gap gets. Look at the R5 right here. He's a good player on kickoff. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Boom, hat and hands. Get rid of it. Get off of it. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Get involved in the play. There's a whip technique. Pretty good. This was our last game. We were already fired, guys. We had a lot of young guys playing. Last chance to play. Well, it, was, it was fun. It wasn't fun getting fired, but it was fun watching them get to play. I think I've got one more here. Yeah, this is just another kind of a clinic two gap, really. Right here with the R5. All right, now I have one more clip here I just wanna show you. I just want to show you uh, a sky kick. This is what we did. One thing we did different with a sky kick is we we hot we hot the one to the side of the kick, all right? Because I think this is an effective tool, particularly if they've got a really good returner. As you can see, we put it. We wanted that ball somewhere between 20 and 25, obviously with enough hang time. But the one is hot down here. and the tube became the contain outside. But you let, you want to you let your one go down there and be physical and get, you know, make sure if he gets inside of it. Okay. All right, guys, that's our, the video. Let's, uh, let me get back over here to, well, let me just find out the questions first. Kendall, what we got? So we have a question from Darius. I don't know if it's in talking about a specific play or video, but he asked, why do you want the, kick, the kicker so far up in the mix? Because, Coach, I, you can put him back there and, and say he's going to be the last line of defense and everything, but – at the end of the day, if, if that returner is, uh, has beat the other 20, uh, 20 people on the field and it's the returner and the kicker, um, you ain't gonna win that one very much. And so our thinking was to go ahead and once again, try to keep the genie in the bottle. You, you can, now, if you, you know, your kicker can, if he's deep, and he doesn't need to be an idiot about it, but he can make the returner uh, you know, cut left and cut right if the, if the kid knows what he's doing. But that's probably about all he's going to do. He's going to be able to make that return, cut one way, cut another, and, uh, you know, give the other guys pursuit to catch up. But we just felt like, and this is college football here now too, uh, but we, we felt like that if the kicker were up in, the, you know, up in the coverage, that just the fact that there was an orange jersey up there is going to make that guy make a cut. And if he had to make the cut early, then – our pursuit was that much closer to him and going to make a play. Kind of like a free safety. Free safety is great on defense, you know, but, but if your free safety is lined up at 20 yards and, uh, you know, and you're counting on him to be part of, you know, uh, some of the run game stuff, uh, it'll be a long day. So that's just the way we thought about it. That doesn't make it, doesn't make it right. I see one person's got a Q&A up there. Kendall, handle that too, if you will. Uh, we're going to take everything through chat here. What, what you got, Kendall? That's it. Um, so Jerry from – New Jersey asked, how do you teach the number one technique wise? How far behind? The, I'm assuming Jerry, you're talking about the fold technique. We taught it uh, yeah. about five yards, five yards deep. In other words, as the contact's made, he's probably going to have about five yards behind the, uh, uh, the, the two and the three. Not very much. I mean, once again, I didn't have that clip on there, but you know, it's kind of the same thing. It's, it's like if you're, um, you know, if, if you're going to come up and you're going to try to make a play in a hole, you want to make that play when the hole is constricted to a certain uh, degree. So we had him up there pretty far. And once again, uh, you know, 
T Tennessee, everybody, and everybody we played too. We got good players at Tennessee. So uh, that's just the way we did it. Kendall? Um, Nate asked if you would put the initial slide that had each of the players' assignments back up. Sure can. I think. If I, if I can't, Nate, it's because of technology, not because I'm not trying. And this will be in the uh, – I'm assuming you mean this one, Nate, okay. the alignment. But um, yeah, what we what we did was this, Nate. And then, and if you're you know college, you're just moving around. But we we lined you know the front guys essentially are going to have their front foot on you know at the near the forty if you're in high school. And then the twos, you know, I guess we really did it from the five to start with from the back line. The R fours left foot ought to be in the crotch of the R five. The R threes left foot ought to be in the crotch of the R four. R2 in the crotch of the R3, on and on and on. And, and you can see it on tape. We did it really well early and, and, and didn't do it as well late. But what happens uh, at college and NFL is that they, they get their own little deal. And as long as they're hitting that line of scrimmage, uh, or line of scrimmage as long as they hit that restraining line, you know, the right way, then don't mess with it. But if you start seeing somebody be late, take them back to the rules and say, wait a minute, dude. You know, you're late every time. You just look at the R4. When he moves, you move. And if you do that, you'll be in good shape. And now uh, I'm, I'm hoping that's what you were looking for there. I, I'll take you back and just show you. Let me. This is just an, a sample, you know, deep right kick. And this is Jerry's question right here. The fold, you know, we typically got that guy folding inside. He was probably about five to 10 yards behind. Same thing here. I mean, you can see where we got the kicker stacked. We got him on the 25-yard line. We gave him an actual landmark, the kicker, that, you know, unless it was a, a weird kick, get to the 25 and start getting ready to play football. I hope I answered your question there. Kendall? Joseph asked, what do you do when R5 gets down there but gets kick out from a guy – sorry, my screen jumped – from a guy – from across the returner's formation. Do you need me to read that again? Yeah, would you please? What do you do when R5 gets down there but gets kick out from a guy from across the returner's formation? Well, I'm assuming that you're, you're, he's getting some kind of trap, um, Coach. And so if, if he's getting that, you know, once again, if, if they've done that the first time, that, that's, a good old, that's a good old head on a swivel, you know, you, and you better coach that up the very, very first day. I mean, you run your butt down there, you're 100 miles an hour. The best way, to, the best way not to some, have something like that happen to you is to be playing 100 miles an hour. If you start tiptoeing down there and, and looking, you know, and that's all you're doing, that's what's going to happen to you. So play fast, play through it. I will say this. If it's the second time they've done it, it's your job as a coach to let them know that they've got that and, and give it to them as a key. If that's their main thing that they do, particularly, and so if you thought that you, he was going to get that more often than not, I'm going to assume that that R5 that I'm that I'm looking at right there, he was going to get trapped from the outside, his left. Then that might be a deal to where I might take the L5 and actually trap the trapper, or twist the fives, do something, twist the five and the four. You know, if you're a high school coach, you might not be able to do chip and wrap, but you could do a twist, and you you know and and and, and at the end of the day, every now and then, they're going to get you, all right? And they're going to knock you on your, you know, you can, and you just got to get back up and, and take note of that, come over to the sideline, coach, coach the guy up on what happened to him, and, uh, you know, move on. Kendall? Did you have any issues when you kicked it to your right hash with teams bringing it across the field? Do you only have the three look for specific keys? That sounds like two questions to me. Um, the, we had a left-footed kicker, as you saw there, who he also kicked in the NFL. He punted in the NFL, actually. But um, so we, we were oftentimes deep right. It's easier for a left-footed kicker to kick it deep right. And so um, we didn't have trouble, as, you, as you're looking at right there, as our base. You've got, um, you know, even without, you know, we, we don't have the rover three right there. But, you know, we've got three guys with shoulder responsibility. So um, it gets a little bit coached into that thing I was talking about 
with your kicker. If he puts it over there somewhere between the hash all right, and the numbers, you know, if he just puts it over there, there's no reason in the world why that ball should ever get out. And, and rarely did it uh, on us. Um, Kenna, what was the second part of that question? It was something, it was like a two-part deal. Do you only have the three look for specific keys? No. Coach, in, in, in my opinion, every cat out there, all 10 of them should have a key. Now, you know, may, maybe not your fold players and things like that, but if you're, if you're a three, four, or five, a three, four, or five, and you're coming down the field, I'm here to tell you right now, if you will, if you will study in a five-man front, the center, you know, however, you know, seven-man, however you want to count them, or if you'll look and, and, and if you will draw up their returns and look at it, and if they've got two returns, go look at who does things differently in uh, return one and return two. And maybe the four and the five will have the same key. But there, there's going to be one or two dudes on the return team that are going to give away the return if they have more than one. And so the more reads – now, I'm going, to, I'm going to fork tongue a little bit, but I'm just going to say you want them reading, but you, you better make sure they read running 100 miles an hour because if you – you know, paralysis by analysis is not a good thing to happen to you on a kickoff cover. Kendall? What should the kicker's hang time be? Ooh. Well, I mean, that's all, that's all subjective, you know, what, what level you are. And I got to be honest, I can't remember. You guys are, who were on here on the first one, I, I told you I'll, I'll never BS you. I can't remember exactly what it was, but uh, if you ask me that question tomorrow, I'll look it up. I, I will. I've got, uh, I've got our times in the NFL, you know, what we had. Uh, we had Robbie Gould uh, and uh, Paul Edinger in the NFL when I was at the Bears. And, um uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, and I think it's going to be different if you're a high school. But I, but I will say this. Um, it's got a lot to do with your success. And uh, if, you're going to, if you want to give up five yards to get the hang time, I would put it that way. But, but ask us tomorrow. Email us or whatever. I'll get that for you, Coach. Go ahead, Kendall. Joseph asks, can you elaborate on what Alabama was doing with giving hand signals for a return side? Yeah, Coach, last weekend, if you'll go back and look at the uh, – it's in the uh, – it's in first down playbook, on the kickoff return uh, deal. When they were coming down, uh, their fold – like their fold guys, the, like this player, the, the two and the three, were signaling with their hands. You know, they were waving like they had their left hand or their right hand above and waving it. And what they were doing is they were telling the fold and stack player uh, what was going on. Now, they might have had, you know, a different uh, configuration this. But all I'm trying to point out is that well-coached team, as, as obviously Alabama is, and, you know, we, we were well-coached too, but it's just a deal where good, good, good kickoff cover teams are going to give their, uh, they're going to give their guys uh, keys. It, it's, it's just smart. Kendall? Did you ever see your right side kick get schemed to where you had rule breakers? Did I ever see the right – we had rule breakers. Um, I'm not – I'm, I'm going to answer this question, Coach, and ask it again if I answer it wrong, if I don't answer what you're asking. Uh, there, there, there can be a deal to where, yeah, they, they can come out and, and give you a false key and it ends up being something else. It's just, uh, you know, it's part of coaching to, to try to figure out what happened. Uh, but – I'm not sure I'm answering your question or I understand your question. Just ask it again. I'll come back to it if I didn't. Kendall? This one's from Todd. You have the four starting on the hashes and threes outside that. Do they always start there? Good, good question. And um, these are on a uh, high school field. And our alignments were – I think these are a little bit off as you're looking at it right there. Um, that will be something that I will put into the uh, notes tomorrow. Uh, the way that I remember it, like that R1 right there is too close. He should be over there definitely somewhere between the 40, excuse me, between the number and the sideline. And the two should be at like the top of the number. The three should be between the numbers and the hash. And I believe the four was like on the inside of the hash. Uh, but I need to go back and look at that. I would not trust the drawing that you're looking at right there 
I would trust it as far as the lanes going down the field. I wouldn't trust it as far as the horizontal alignments. This one's from Mario. Should you have your more aggressive guys as fives and fours, even if they are not your fastest? Absolutely. I think, well, <laughs> the way our personnel would be, you know, with this scheme right here would be that, all right, if I'm going to kick it deep right, maybe my best player would be the two. Because you, you watched it. You know, the ball's going to get kicked over here. He's going to get be taken on wedges. He's got to get down. He's got to – if the ball does go away, whatever, he's he got to protect the one. So the two was our best player. Our five was our first in guy every time. Five and four need to be your guys. So sometimes it's just a deal where they'll be first in because that's their personality. So five, four, and three – all these got cats over here need to be linebacker, aggressive types that want to get involved in contact if it shows up. One has got to be a safety type that can fill, you know, not a, you know, not, not a cover corner. All right. Don't put, don't put a cover corner out here. All right. Because that ball's going to break up and he ain't going to make the tackle over here. Same thing. I think your four and five, all right. Need to be physical. Your three, your three and your two, if there's any such thing, or where you can give up a little bit as far as talent and speed, if the ball's going to be kicked correctly, all right, they need to be responsibility-type players. I'm going to keep the ball on the inside part of my shoulder. I'm going to contain it, and I'm going to fold and stack over here. Kendall? This one's from Theo. Do you teach the whip, rip, and two-gap every day? Well, if the head coach would let me, I would. <laughs> I mean – no, you, you is it Theo Kendall? Yep. Theo, it, it, that, it's a great question, and it, and it gets into something, you know, just where does your practice time go? How, you know, what, what hard play to practice, isn't it? Because you can't go down and run, you know, run your players into. So uh, we, we, did, um, we did break things up. You know, if, if we were bad on the get-offs, we'd go do get-offs. If we were having trouble with speed and read, yeah, that's what we would do. That's that we would make sure that we incorporated that during the week. I would say that the number one uh, deal that we did, other than fitting, was the uh, whip and the rip. And what you do is you, you know, I, I, I hate using bags for special teams things. Uh, I, I think it's more effective if you just take a player, even if they don't have pads on. Let them, you know, retreat and uh, give a block and, and let the player that, you know, the, the cover guy rip or whip. I think the best way of doing that is just to do it, you know, get it, get it, get it cordoned down to where it's only 20 yards. But uh, I, that's one of the drills I would work at least every other week, if not almost every week. Kendall? This one is from Hugo in Mexico. How do you teach the cover when you face a wall return? You go. I just want to let you know that you won the Furthers Coach uh, Award today. Um, we're glad you came too. Um, when you say wall, I'm assuming that you're talking about a, a wedge, okay? And uh, I, I don't know what the rules are down there, but uh, it's it's illegal to have more than really two guys uh, form a wall in in the U.S. in uh, American football. But when we had it, what we would do is we would try to make, if it was a three-man wall, we would get two players to penetrate the, uh, the two creases, okay, and try to crease it, and then we would have the outside guy play off of that. So really what you would have is three on three, and you would have uh, two guys in the crease and one guy playing off of that. If you email us tomorrow, Hugo, if that's what you're talking about, like a three-man wedge, and, and y'all still can do that down there, I've got some stuff I can send you on that. I've got it from the – uh, Chicago Bears back in 2006 when I was there when, when you could have a three-man wedge in the NFL. Kendall? So this one is from Bill. What, which player do you use to hold the ball when it's windy? The R1. Well, that's not, that's not true. That's not true. It depends on what we're, what, where we're kicking it. It'd be the, be the L1. He'd be the folding stack guy. I mean, you got and, – and, and your scheme got to be the same as us. If it were, you know, if it were windy, would we be deep right or would we be squibbing it? You know, if we were going to squib it, then it might be the R1. 
you know, a lot of it, Coach, depends on, you know, you want that cat that's not going to let the ball go uh, too early. You know, it's, it's, it's Charlie Brown and, and, and Lucy a little bit. Better make sure you got the right guy. But typically you want the guy that's going to have uh, a responsibility that they can still, you know, cover, and that would be the old one in this situation right here. Go ahead, Kendall. Also from Bill, thoughts on your most productive onside kick formation? Well, it changed the rules so much on that. Let me – I've got one of these windows opened up. and not sure if I'm going to be able to do this or not, but um, I think I'll just go back over here. You know, they, they changed the rules so much with kickoff, but, you know, I, you know, we've had the deal where two kickers – you know, and I see that happening quite a bit where you've got two kickers. Um, but to me, it's just a matter of, once again, this is a big time personnel deal right here. We've got so many windows opened up here, guys. I'm not sure this is going to load loads up pretty good right here. But, you know, we, we did, and I'm, I'm not going to open these up, but, you know, we had a surprise to where essentially, you know, it's just the, the kicker, once again, the ability to make that ball bounce up and, and they've even changed that rule now. And we've got a surprise bunt. And, I, I, you know, I always like the surprise bunt because I just thought the, it's almost like a golf swing. The less that happens, the less it can go wrong. If your kicker can just bunt and let that thing get 10 yards, it's amazing, you know, and, and the, the officials, you know, halftime don't call it. It's your fives will run through the line. And, the, you know, half the time the kicker can just lay on it. But we had that. We had a surprise onside right. Um, but, I, you know, what's the percentage of onside kicks? They're low, man. <laughs> They're low. So I, I'm not going to profess to be an expert or have great success with that, but I don't think anybody can. Kendall? Um, so Hugo kind of clarified on the wall. He said, wall like a big tunnel in the sideline return, just like in the back days used in punt return. Oh, you mean like pinning you? Well, that, Hugo, if, if you can see like our, our deals here, let me go, I'll bring up the rover here. That, that shouldn't happen to you. I mean, you, you shouldn't, on a, on a punt return, you know, you've got a deal to where people can, can actually, and you're talking about everybody getting outside and pinning inside, pinning inside. If you teach these principles, Hugo, of shoulder, meaning that that ball is on the inside shoulder, inside shoulder, all right? Here's your contained player. That, they shouldn't be able to get a wall out here. That's, that is the five, all right, and the four, and even the three if it weren't a rover. Their, their job is to not let people get outside. Now, Hugo, if you're getting that, that should be, I'll promise you that the kickoff return team has players that are indicators. In other words, they've got guys that are hanging around out here. And if you've got a guy that's hanging around out here on the kickoff return team, he has no choice but to stay as wide as the widest. Now, if he's, if he's so wide that, you know, you can beat this guy to the ball, that's one thing. But if you start getting cats outside of you and starting to come over here, or if you start getting them coming down the field and pinning you that way, in other words, they're – releasing up the field and pinning. If they do that enough, they don't have enough people to, to keep the ball carrier from, you know, having the ability to get out of here. So I just think that play your principles, you know, play your principles that you've got. Have ball players, have shoulder players, have contained players. And you shouldn't have the ability – they shouldn't have the ability to get outside and pin you with a wall. But I, I thank you for clarifying the question. I understand what you're asking now. And, and that is an issue in punt return sometimes. Kendall. So this is from Joseph. You always kicked the ball to the same side, opposite nose where the ball is getting kicked to. Did you come across a return scheme that gave your kickoff issues? Read the first part again, Kendall, please. You seem you always kick the ball to the same side. Uh, oh, yeah. but go ahead. Opposite nose where the ball is getting kicked to. Well. We, we 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 most of the time kicked it there, but you no, know, we we had a we had a left kick. We didn't we didn't kick it down the middle, but we we you know we had a uh, you know we had a right kick, and then we obviously mixed up the coverage. 
but we would have a left kick that we would, you know, try to disguise as much as you can. We knew that once we kicked it left, that, you know, him being a left footed kicker, it was going to be a deal to where uh, it probably wasn't going to be as deep. We had a sky kick that we wouldn't just, we wouldn't just sky kick it, uh, you know, right at the end of the game or end of the half. We would sometimes sky kick it just to sky kick it because maybe they had a good returner or maybe, you know, we knew that there was going to be a void area over here and we just let it drop on the 15, kind of like the North Carolina State thing you know, that I showed you. So we probably kicked it deep right 80 to 85% of the time, Coach, not, not, not all the time. But I'm a firm believer that, once again, I go back to Urban Meyer in Ohio State. Everybody in the park, and my mom sitting beside me, she knew where the ball was going. It didn't matter because the ball was going to be right here, and the only chance they might have for a return is to try to punch a hole, you know, in the sideline, and, and they never did that either. So I'm a firm believer if you do it right, you can kick it. It doesn't matter if they know. Kendall? Sticking with that topic, Todd asks, do you usually sky kick or directional kick versus a great returner? Um, we, we a, a great, you know, great is relative, but we, we would sky kick it. We try to keep it away from, um, you know, because if you, if you directional kick, you know, they can put two guys back there and you guys that, I don't know how many of you attended the, uh, webinar where we did kick off a turn that we had put Errol Patterson back there, uh, the year I was at Tennessee. And obviously he's still, you know, running, uh, kickoff returns back for touchdowns in the NFL almost 10 years later. And so we had two guys back there, but sometimes they would kick it to our other guy because they had so many people bearing down on Cordero that, um, you know, the other guy would, would spit one out to the 40, 45. So uh, if you're going to, if you play a good team and you try to directional kick it, they're going to put two returners back there. And I, so I would say the best thing to do would be to kick it a sky kick and, and try to let one of those tight ends uh, field it and maybe it'll bounce off his uh, helmet. Go ahead, Kendall. This is from Johnny. What is your installation progression as far as do you teach alignment first, then scheme, then technique? Do you have a progression on what you go over one day, then the next day, and so on? Good question. Uh, it's really uh, Johnny's whole part whole. I mean, we'll come out. Obviously, you know, you're, you're going to meet on it. You're going to show video. You're going to, you know, the, the playbook part of it. You know, let them. That's why I'm a firm believer in playbooks. I think that you know, they can go through and actually see, particularly if their playbook's drawn well, what it is. But when you go to the field, what we would do is, you know, you obviously wouldn't have pads on. You would talk about the alignments, be very, be a stickler about horizontal alignments, vertical alignments. Uh, and then you would, you know, maybe go down, you know, half speed, three quarter speed. Uh, you know, at Tennessee, you got coaches, you know, you got coaches on top of coaches. So we would have you know, five dudes coaching this team. You'd have two players apiece, maybe more than that. Uh, but my whole thing is make them see the overall whole scheme and then break it down. Then talk to them about this is the get off. This is the, you know, this is the, uh, you know, speed and, and avoid area. This is the two rip and whip. This is the two gap. And uh, then practice it as such as parts and then come back and put it together whole. But that's the way we would install it. Kendall? This is from Mario. Coach, I usually only have 20 to 25 guys on a roster. I often have to go live right and left side separately. Do you have any recommendations for practice with small rosters? Well, I think you've already hit on one right there. Yeah, you just got to – because you, probably your coaching staff is smaller too that – if, if you can break it down into half field, um, and, and that's, that kind of goes back to the last question, we would do that quite a bit. We, we would, you know, for a different reason, Mario, we would take maybe the backside five cover guys and their coaches would go down there and coach that, and the front side uh, five guys would be on another field and their coach would be coaching that. I think that's an excellent uh, way of doing it. I think that – if you can, any way that you can ever take, uh, you know, maybe your, maybe your practice and just, if, you, if you're going to have those small numbers, and I'm, and I'm trying to think through this, because I, I honestly have never had smaller numbers like that. But I think that the first thing you're going to have to think about is not getting crazy about 
the amount that you try to take in. In other words, get you one or two things that you want to do, get really good at that, and then try to, you know, maybe put a wrinkle in here, a wrinkle in there. But if you're going to, if you're going to just kick deep right, then to me, you ought to just break it down into half field like you're doing. Really focus on your, your right side. And don't, you know, don't run these guys down here. Start your drill. Um, if, if, if you're trying to get your fits taught, don't make them run 50 yards down the field to teach the fits that week. You know, if you're playing somebody um, and really, you know, you've got this part, they know this part and all that, you know, get them right here in the 30 yard line and blow the whistle and then get in and get your scout team already in position too. And then coach your fits up. Don't run your legs out of your team. All right. To get them in position because that's what special team plays are. And, and your head coach, and you may be the head coach, but uh, he'll appreciate that too. But it's hard. Fewer numbers are hard. Kendall. Have you ever defended a starburst return? And what was your philosophy to stop the big return? Starburst return. I don't know what that is unless that's where uh, everybody gets in a, in a cluster and then they break it out a different way. I, I actually put that on the uh, First Down Playbook website a couple years ago. Uh, if that's what that is, please let me know. Come back and ask that question again. I, I, I don't know what a starburst is. Kendall, what was the second part of that? Um, and what was your philosophy to stop the big return? Um, the, 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 I'm, I'm not sure how to answer that. The only way that we taught, we didn't talk about uh, big returns versus small returns. All we taught about, talked about was our fundamentals, our philosophy, our technique, and based on what could happen out there, you know, you had responsibilities. Now, I want to, guys, in case you, you know, this is how detailed it is. It's how detailed it is for you if you've got first down playbook. I mean, you're talking about every player, deep right and deep left right there, the assignments. It doesn't matter a whole lot about what they do if you do it right, okay? So that, that was our philosophy. That, that's just ours. Maybe we're wrong about it. But, and once again, I, I come back and let me know what a starburst return is if, if you can. Kendall? Thoughts on a 6-4 compared to a 5-5 alignment? Well, I like a 6-4 alignment, but I don't think you can do that anymore, can you? Um, if I'm wrong, I stand corrected. Uh, maybe you can in, high, in, in different high schools, but um, I know that they've outlawed five, uh, they've outlawed six and four in the NFL and, and in college. Uh, if I'm wrong about that, somebody correct me. If you can, uh, all of these drawings at one time, guys, were 6-4. I would certainly have six over here to the right, uh, and four to the left if the rules would allow me to, without a doubt. But these are drawn up like the rules are. You have to have five on each side of the kicker. Kendall? Thoughts on twists or scramble techniques versus a kickoff return team that mainly blocks man? I, I, I like it. I just, uh, you know, once again, predetermining uh, the, the twist and everything is is okay all right but i'm i'm a bigger fan once again now you're you if you're coaching a high school i'm, I'm going to yield a little bit because you may not be able to, to to read and chip and wrap and all that but yeah if, if you if you want to if you want to just do this and not read it and wrap it i think it's good i really do i think it's good at the high school level the big thing you got to be careful about is just making sure that they still play fast there's nothing that you're going to do scheme-wise that's going to be worth slowing your players down uh, as they cover. But, yeah, you know, rap, particularly against individual blocks, uh, twists and wraps are good. Kendall? We have some clarification on the 6-4. Uh, Jerry said, you can do 6-4 in high school, must have at least four on either side of the kicker. Well, there you go. Jerry, at, at one time, every one of these drawings – had the uh, because he was a left-footed kicker. Every one of these joints, the five was on this side of the kicker. If that'll answer your question. Now the assignments weren't weren't you know much different, if any. 
but absolutely, if they if they allow you to put six on that side, put them put them over there. It, it's it's the Urban Meyer thing again. We're not don't pretend everybody knows where the ball's going. Get your guys over here. Get down the field. Don't make that guy run three steps to three steps further. All right now, I, I'm gonna uh, make a point since that's come up. You need to spend, it goes back to uh, the question I had about two or three ago about installation. You need to work all that out in here. You don't need to be a, a dictator about, you know, if, if your fives will be over here and it's a six, four alignment or a five, five or whatever your rules allow, you better let this cat have some input because he needs to feel good about where they line up once he gets in here because, you know, they're, they're, they're quirky cats now. You, you don't need to screw your kicker up because he, you know, the guy's, so what we did is there was a lot of talk initially about where the fives are going to be, where the kicker is, is he comfortable, can he get his approach, can everything come off smoothly inside right here. I think that's a big deal to get straight right off the get-go. Kendall? So those are all the questions that we have so far. Only 30? <laughs> I was kidding, guys. That was good. I appreciate it. If there's any more, please let us know before we get off here. That's what, and, and guys, please understand that I am not professing to have uh, all the answers, if, if any answers. I, I'm going to just each week try to tell you what my experience is. And if there was something that I didn't answer completely or even 40%, or if I told you that I'd go back and look at it, take me up on it. Email us tomorrow. I will slow down and get you that answer. I just appreciate you spending um, time with us here tonight. And, um, you know, you're, you're looking, and I, and I showed you that, you know, just a second ago. Uh, you know, I own the company, so I'm going to brag on it. If I didn't, then I, I, I wouldn't be, uh, A, I wouldn't be doing a good job, and I wouldn't be proud of what I do and what we do. That's kind of a dangerous word. But, um, you know, we're extremely detailed about, a lot of what we do, almost everything we do in First Down Playbook. And so, um, once again, I know you all got budget constraints. I know it's uh, COVID-19. I know this and that and the other. But over the long haul, if your ability to teach, teach with color, to teach, you know, uh, a lot of the very finite things that you have to, uh, I would strongly urge that you take a two-week free trial on First Down Playbook and take a look at it. I ain't telling you to buy it. But I'll tell you, if, you, if you'll come in and look at uh, First Down Playbook on the two-week free trial, you'll either get it or you won't get anything else. I know you, you know, you'll, may have to tolerate Huddle another year because your budget does. But uh, I would recommend that you take a look at, at us in that regard. Uh, Kendall, am I forgetting anything? No, I think we're all set. Guys, thank you very much. I appreciate it. We're coming back next week with uh, probably – probably punt return next week. And then uh, guys, at, at some point in the last three weeks, I'm going to also show you the chart system that uh, Dave Tobe runs at the Kansas City Chiefs. I promise you he still runs it. Uh, and uh, it's, it's, it's a system that um, essentially we, you know, millionaires uh, came in each week and competed just to, you know, to win the uh, point total for the charts. And so I think that's something that every high school coach and college coach can use too. But thank you very much for being a part of this, guys. Uh, this will be up on the uh, – it will be up on our website by later tomorrow uh, if you want to go back and get this video and, and see the diagrams uh, in the video as we use them. Y'all take care. Be safe. Let us know if we can do anything for you. Good night.